exciting podcast this is going to be. There I am, always YouTube location. Check us out. Today, I'm going to have a few of my friends talk to you. We played a round of golf. Terry couldn't think of nothing better to do than to start out with three straight birdies. And he's going to tell you when he started golf, how old he was. Um, Dan, Steady Eddie's very competitive. He's extremely competitive. Trust me, he knows all those little golf games. Rabbit, squirrel, whatever you want to call them, he knows them. And then there's James, and he's new to the game. But let me tell you something. James is out driving everybody. So hold on to your butts. Listen to their comments. All right. They're coming up a little bit later on for you. Yeah, of course I'm doing my Trojan days, you know. I'm just, it's, it's, it's March, and uh, that was a time, um, you know, sometimes your graduation comes early, so, you know, I'm just doing my little thing like this. Um, but it was a great time. It was a great time. Um, so I'm wearing my Trojan colors today. Hey. All right. Um, today, because of the amount of responses like, hey, B-Man, can you show me your, uh, chipping? Chipping is what they want to see. Okay, so I got five people that want to see chipping, all right? Um, and yes, I got you covered there too. So I'm going to show you a technique that I use to practice and, and, and I used to teach this way to get people to understand what it is about chipping. Uh, that sequence is going to cover how to chip or what happens when you chip like most people, especially amateurs, they, they, they seem to chip around the green with a club that I'm just not comfortable with for a amateur. They're chipping with their uh, sand wedge, with their uh, uh, lob wedges, and this is what they're doing around the green, and they're doing one of two things. Chunk, boom, right in front of you, or blade over the green. Wrong club. So I'm going to show you what happens when you use those sand wedge and those lob wedge. I recommend in this training video here that's coming up for your technique that you chip with either an 8 iron or a 9 iron. Just stop it. Just do it. When you get to your green or your driving range, hit a few chips with your 8 iron or 9 iron. Get a feel for what those clubs will do. The 8 iron is the best one, just so you know. So don't go so high with your chipping uh, clubs. So I'm going to show you and demonstrate that for you a little bit later on. And then after the gentleman speak and you get that tip, I'll be back at you. Fair enough? Sound like a winner? All right, let's do it. A loft wedge, a pitching wedge, and then my favorite, an 8-iron. That was chipping from the front with a lob wedge, lofty wedge. Now I'm going to show you from behind. I want you to particularly pay attention to the shadow of the shaft of the club after I hit the ball. The shadow never crosses my front lead toe, if you will notice. See that? I still have the tees placing the ball in the same spot. You still see the sticks pointing the direction and where I have the ball in my stance. But as you'll see, that shadow, once I move the club forward, does not overlay on top of my foot, these clubs, okay? So that's the pitch wedge from the front and behind. This is my favorite. This is the 8-iron. Same location. We're hitting the balls out of the same hole. The tees are still in the ground. The ball is in between the tees. You see the sticks pointing the direction and approximately where the ball is in my stance. The shaft is leaned forward. My feet are very quiet. The shadow of that shaft does not pass my front foot. This is very critical. Very critical. I want you to move rather quickly doing this. This is how you develop touch and feel for chipping around the green. Remember we did this with a uh, lob wedge. We did this with a pitching wedge. We're now chipping with an 8-iron. 
It's the 8-iron from the front. No matter how hard you try, chipping around the green with a lob wedge, rolling like a putt. You've heard this before. This is not new. I want you to watch this time how many balls you can actually see on the green out of these five chips using a 8-iron. This is what I want amateurs to do. This is what I want beginners to do. Grab an 8-iron. That one's off to the right, but it's about pin high. That's one. Let's see what the next four do. Good afternoon, sports fans. B-Man. B-Man Golf. TTI. I'm here in the parking lot because we just got dusted by Terry Kincaid. Terry, how are you? Good, and yourself? I'm pretty good. I want to know, actually the listeners want to know, how old was Terry when he started playing golf? Started playing golf when I was 18. Okay, and, and what motivates you to keep playing now? The I've always played sports my whole life, so the competitiveness that I have within myself to get better and compete against the course drives me to play birdies drive me eagles drive me so that's why i still continue to play and then the fellowship with all of my friends that i play with that's very important too right up there with the golf outstanding now let me ask terry if you had to give a golfer a particular tip what would you what kind of tip would you give them go get lessons by a pga professional at a club learn the basics go work on it and your game's going to be a lot better than you thinking that you're the athlete and you can go out there and do it yourself. Go get lessons. Outstanding, Terry. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ben. Good afternoon, sports fans. B-Man, B-Man Golf, TTI. I'm out here with Dan Pippen, another good sporting golfer friend of ours. And Dan, of course, the listeners want to know how old is Dan when he started playing golf. Uh, 16. 16. It took eight years off when I was in college. Okay. And then I came back to the game. And and what motivates you to keep playing? Beat my partner James Nichols. <laughs> Is that what motivates you? That's what motivates me. Okay. No. Nine years younger than me. All right. He thinks he should go drive. Me. All right. <laughs> okay. This is a funny one. <laughs> All right. Now, Dad, if you had to give a golfer a tip, what tip would you give them? Well, I would say uh, don't be too hard on yourself because no one else really cares. Um, as far as mechanics, keep your head still. All right. Dan, I appreciate you being on the show, and uh, thanks for playing today. Had a ball. Well, thanks for inviting me. You got it. All right, golf fans, B-Man again. B-Man Golf TTI. I have with me... Mr. James Nichols, a very, very good longtime friend, and we finally are going to be able to capture him. James, what we really want to know is how old was Mr. Nichols when he started playing golf? I was uh, 43. And and what keeps you motivated in playing today? Oh, what keeps you motivated? One, uh, it's a game. You can always try to do better, and when you're when you're out golfing, you can have some really bad holes, but then you can hit them and say, wow, I hit that hole like a pro you know and uh so it's it's kind of exciting to do that and also i, I like uh most of the people that i golf with i i, I enjoy uh, their company very nice now let me ask you this if you had to give a golfer a beginner intermediate player a tip what would your tip be my tip would be to take lessons because even though i started late in life uh i was often playing better than some of my friends that have been playing for 20 years and they never take lessons, and I took lessons uh, to begin with, uh, and that, that would be my tip. Wow, James. Listen, we appreciate you being on the show, and I enjoy your company, and you're, you're quite the fellow. Thank you so much. All right, so how did that work for you? The chipping? Good? Good? Okay. So I hope that helps you in there. Put, put, put some tees in the ground. Put the ball right in the middle. See if you cannot make such a huge divot. That's the biggest problem with amateurs chipping. They chip 
and you could plant a redwood tree in that hole that they did. I just showed you 20, 25 balls in the same spot, no divot. So you have to learn how to chip like that to be a better chipper. You can't just go by, you know, touch and feel. You, you may not have that in your repertoire of your game. So take the technique to heart. I've given you a bunch in this series of YouTubes to help you be a better player. If you can't use them all, use at least one. And like B-Man will always tell you, put them like you own them and rock the baby.